This is my uh, Norton Commando 961 and uh, this is a video about how to do an oil change. So the first thing you have to do is to remove the filler cap so that when you remove the drain plug um, it uh, breathes and lets it run through. So that's the, that's the filler cap uh, which is from the, the top of the frame. I've taken that out so I just put that on one side. And then the oil drain plug is underneath here, I don't know if you can see, it's just underneath there. Um, it's very awkward to get to because of the exhaust pipe and in actual fact I can't get a socket in there so I have to undo it with a uh, undo it with a spanner. It's got quite a long thread on it, so uh, it takes quite a few turns to uh, get it out, but um, nice and gently does it. Oh, there we are, and just make sure that we've got the oil pan underneath to uh, catch the oil. That's great. So my drain plug's just actually just caught on the exhaust there because it's not a lot of clearance, but uh, I can get it out. Oh, there it is. Okay, just uh, give that a little bit of a clean up, uh, if you can see that there. It's got a little magnet um, on there, so uh, just check that. Seems quite clean. It's got a little cloth wipe it, there's not much on that, so I think we're okay there. And there's a rubber uh, o-ring around the inside of the plug which looks fine to me so I think we're okay we don't need to change that so that's the drain plug out so I'll just leave that on one side now and let the, the oil drain out unfortunately it kind of drips out all over the exhaust so I'll have to clean it off the exhaust uh, whilst I'm finished so the next job is to undo these uh, banjo bolts uh, for the oil lines there's one on the bottom here one on the top and you need to undo those to uh, drain all the, the oil out of those lines. So there's 17 mil, um, sorry, no, that's a 19 millimeter um, nut on those and the drain plug of mine was a, a 13 mil plug. So I just um, break this off. There are a couple of copper washers on there which you need to just watch out for and catch. And if they're in good nick, I'm going to use them again. Unfortunately, it's a bit messy because, of course, the oil comes out. I catch as much as it ever as I can. Right, and get my copper washers. the banjo bolt. Okay, that's good. So I'll let that drain out. So I've got my copper washers here. That's one of them. That's actually in very nice condition. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reuse that one because it's in lovely condition. I will just uh, anneal it uh, and then I can use it again. There's no grooves or marks on that one, so I'll just put that safe there. And likewise with that one, it's in nice condition. So I can reuse both of those. And that's the, uh, that's the banjo bolt that's come out the bottom. So I need to take the top one out as well. I went drain. Drain the oil out of the top as well. Just line up my bucket to catch the oil. This is just the oil draining out of the line. And again, catch my copper washers. That's the bottom one. Top one. Just make sure I queue it up there. Right. 
So checking the washers again. Again, that's in beautiful condition. So I'm going to reuse that one. And this one as well. I've, I do have some spare copper washers, but um, when they're in nice condition like this, there's no reason not to use them again. As I say, I just anneal them before I, I use them again. And uh, if I remember, I'll do a quick video of that, show you that. And that's the, uh, the top banjo bolt. Okay, so that's the lines open. We, uh, I'll just let that uh, run out. So the next job is the, uh, the oil filter. So, uh, so I'm going to take the, uh, the oil filter cover off now, which is here. There's four Allen head screws hold that in place. Um, it's got a slight curvature to it, and so um, even though it's uh, symmetrical, you can, you can actually fit it back in different way around. You've got to make sure that you get it in the right way around so that the cover fits the, the curve of the, the engine casing there. And there's an O ring. Oh, there's an O ring on the case, which has just come loose as I've taken that off. Put that back in. And again, you need to ch check the condition. I'll, I'll show you the O ring in a minute. Just dispose of this uh, filter. That's the old filter. There we are. Just give this a quick wipe, clean it up. There we are, that's a bit better now. Just uh, wiped it down. So that's the oil filter uh, cover. Uh, notice on the inside there's this O-ring there. Again, you need to just check the condition of that, make sure it's okay. And then also there is a plunger in the middle. Um, maybe just hear it move in there. Just make sure that that's free moves because that's, uh, that's what presses and holds the oil filter in place when you put it on the bike. Okay, so time to fit an oil, uh, a new oil filter. So this is the uh, filter. It's a Bosch P9147. It's the new filter, which they're fairly easy to get, certainly here in the UK, because they, they're quite widely used. I think they go in uh, Mercedes Benz as well. Uh, so it comes with uh, a couple of uh, uh, new um, rubber O rings, but I, I don't need them, so I'm not, not going to bother. So let's uh, get this fitted. So you fit the uh, oil filter over the cap there on the on the casing. That's a good snug fit on there. That's it. So that's it on, and now I can. Um, um, fit this back into the housing and tighten down the cover. So you're going to make sure you get it the right way around. You can you can tell if you've got it the wrong way around. Um, that's the right way around uh, because if you get it the wrong way around, then the the lines of the casing um, aren't right. It uh, this uh, lid sticks out from the angles. Right. So let's get this back into place. Great. The official torque setting on the oil filter cover bolts is five newton meters, but to be honest, that's so low. Um, really, just don't tighten them too much at all. Um, you just got to use a bit of feel with those. Um, I, I've got quite a lightweight uh, torque wrench, and that only really starts reading at about ten newton meters. So uh, uh, I know that um, I'm not tightening those down too much at all. So um, this is one of my 
crush washers and I'm just going to I'm going to reuse this one so I'm just going to anneal it with a bit of heat to soften it up um, and so it'll uh, squash down again so I've got a, a blowtorch here and the idea is to um, heat it up I'm trying to keep it in camera here the idea is to heat this up until it's cherry red and then um, I've got an asbestos mat just down here next to me that I'm dropping it on so it's not uh, in any danger of burning anything whilst it cools down. Starting to go as that. Yep, that'll do. So just drop that one down here. So I'm going to do all four of those and then I'll get back to you in just one second. So here are my annealed copper washers. Um, let them cool down and I've just um, uh, very lightly rubbed them over with some um, uh, wet and dry paper, very uh, fine grade wet and dry paper on a flat surface just to make sure that the two sides are nice and flat. But I'm, I'm happy to reuse those now. So uh, let's get the oil lines back on. So first of all I'm going to reconnect this uh, top line, I've got a copper washer on there, thread the banjo bolt through, copper washer on the other side, and line it up. Nice. I'm going to pinch that down now. And now for the bottom one. Now, a little tip um, for just checking that you don't have any problems with vibration and things coming loose on these is to put a little dob of uh, blue tack, uh, sorry, not blue tack, little blob of um, tipex is what I'm trying to say, a little blob of tipex on, on the banjo and uh, on the bolt uh, and then you can see if there's uh, any movement. So um, I'm going to do that after I've uh, cleaned, cleaned them off later, okay? So, put the um, filler plug back in the sump and we're good to go. This is a bit tricky to get to because of the exhaust in the way. I'm going to move my drip tray out of the way as so well and get to it. The uh, flange on the on the drain nut means that it's uh, you can't thread it up between the exhaust so you've got to sort of slide it along from the front to the back and then feel your way in there to uh, get it lined up in the right place. So I'm pinching that up with the uh, spanner now. The uh, official torque setting on this is 20 newton meters but uh, I can't get the torque wrench in there to clinch it up so you just have to do it so it's tight. Okay, so that's my engine oil done, ready to refill it with some oil. So the, the oil capacity of the bike is three litres from dry, so um, it's obviously not totally dry uh, at this point, but it's pretty dry because I've drained everything out including the, uh, the oil filter housing. 
but you don't want to overfill the bike. So the best way to, to fill it is to underfill it, um, run the engine a little bit and then gradually top it up. So I use a measuring jug, I've got a measuring jug here, this is a, a two litre measuring jug. What I do is I put two litres of oil in, well actually just, just over two litres of oil in, um, and then I run the engine to circulate it and then I check the oil level and gradually top it up until I'm happy uh, I've got the right um, oil level. And the level that you're looking for is, um, this is the, uh, the dipstick, so that's the, if I hold it the other way up, that's the, the, the right way up, that's the way it goes in. That's the low oil mark there, that's the high oil mark, so you want it about halfway between the two. So um, what I do is I just gradually top it up until um, it reaches that level. And this is the oil I use, um, it's uh, uh, 10W40, uh, and I actually use the Castrol fully synthetic um, racing motorcycle oil. Um, you can use semi-synthetic but um, because I, I do a lot of bikes, I service a lot of bikes, I buy this stuff in bulk and it actually works out cheaper for me to, to use this than to uh, just go down the shop and, and buy a can of the semi-synthetic. Uh, semi so um, I, I prefer to run my bikes on, on this. So I'm just going to top up the oil now, firstly with uh, just over two litres um, and then I'll uh, bring it up to the three litre mark. Okay, so time to do the transmission fluid now. So first job is to take the uh, filler cap off here so it can breathe. Um, and that's here just behind the, uh, the cylinders on the left hand side of the bike. And that's a 17 millimeter. Annoyingly actually, uh, annoyingly everything that you have to undo on the bike to change the oil is a different size. So four different things to undo, four different spanners. But that's the way it is. So that's the filler cap, no problem. Put that safely on one side. And I've just moved the camera so you can see the draining operation. So I've just put my drip tray under there. And the, uh, the drain plug is just, just under here, just to the outside of the, the frame. And that's a 14 millimeter. So that that out, and again there's the uh, drain plug. Just clean that up and check that over. So the gearbox takes the same oil as the engine, the 10W40, and I'm using the fully synthetic again. It takes 1.2 litre, so I've uh, just measured out 1.2 litre in my measuring jug here. Now the procedure that it tells you to follow in the manual is to top it up until um, the oil starts to seep out of the filter spill plug or the, the, the engine oil plug which should be here but as you see on my bike there isn't one and I've, uh, I've never figured out why I haven't got one so it shows a plug there quite clearly um, on, the, uh, on the manual and uh, I've seen that on, um, on other bikes as well but I haven't got one so I just put measure out, carefully measure out 1.2 litres and put that uh, in the gearbox as being the correct amount. So that's my uh, 1.2 litres in the gearbox. So I just uh, replace the again just checking the washer that's got that's got the copper washer on it. Once again that's still in nice condition. It has been annealed once before as that one but um, it's fine. Again, this should be torqued down to 20 newton meters, which I will torque this one in a moment. 
get my torque wrench out and just check the torque. No ones that I can actually get a torque wrench on. I'll uh, I'll check them and torque them down. So there you are. Oil change and uh, engine oil and gearbox oil change on the Norton Commando 961.